Okay, so my, my name is George Turner. Um, I'm kind of wearing slightly two hats in a way because I like, um, as well as being the subject of PPI, I also like conducting research myself. So at the moment I'm actually looking at research between the relationship between academics and services because that again is quite an interesting relationship and it obviously links in nicely with this um, work that you're doing at the moment. So hopefully I can see things both from the academic point of view and from the uh, point of view of, of the subject, the participant. Okay, okay. thank you. So you've got experience of being a lay member on a panel. Could you just talk to us about a time that that's worked well, where it's felt like a meaningful activity that you've been part of? Okay, um, right. Well, obviously I, I jump on words like meaningful activity, um, but okay, as from, from my point of view anyway, uh, the main thing that had been involved really was some research looking at frailty. Uh, I think obviously you've got some older people there and we were just simply talking about what the word frailty meant. Um, and I think this was as um, a focus group. And my kind of feelings about that as a focus group, because one of the reasons why I'm trying to do interviews myself rather than a focus group, was uh, it seemed to be a slightly loss of information because I know there were like half a dozen people there that were really got a lot of interesting ideas about frailty. But what happened, of course, was that we kind of coalesced around one belief and we've got a kind of group think going on and that really struck me as being quite a loss of actually what was going on. So I think I felt slightly frustrated in, in that, that sense, um, but I could see it was kind of I'd done maybe for more reasons of efficiency than anything else, okay that you could see a large group of people within half an hour, they will come up with something that's potentially publishable or potentially useful. Whereas obviously doing half an hour separate interviews would not really have, have used the time that well. So I found it slightly off-putting in that sense. But that's, far, quite, that, that's quite interesting, George, isn't it? In the fact that sometimes we think that to get people together will in itself elicit a really interesting conversation between people. But you, you felt that on that occasion it kind of lent to one view being presented. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think it's necessary just that one occasion. I think in all the stuff I've kind of read about focus group, that is the great tendency that you tend to get a common denominator, sometimes the lowest common denominator, or you get somebody dominating the situation or whatever. So I don't get me wrong, focus groups certainly have their place, but I also think that you have to think of the, the downsides of it as well on there. As far as meaningful goes, that is really an interesting kind of word. The reason why I'm, I'm focusing on it is because I can see that meaningful for a researcher might be different meaningful for a participant because they may be coming at things from different angles and I think this is going to the more you have the public involved the more the nature of the research is going to change I mean I can talk about more about that if, if you want to but as far as the meaningful goes the researcher has got their agenda they have sometimes been programmed, they've put in their applications, they've got their money, et cetera, et cetera. So they've, they've kind of boxed themselves in to some extent. But it may well be that the participant has got a totally different or a totally different agendas that are not necessarily compatible. So what we might think is meaningful, the researcher might regard as almost meaningless and what they regard as meaningful we might regard as relatively trivial so that's a really interesting slant possibly. so how could that how could that happen differently george to become meaningful what, how could that look different okay well i think rather than there's a tendency to kind of wheel them in at the appropriate time isn't there okay and then having done their job you wheel them out again OK, and clearly, if you're going to expect people to be singing from the same hymn sheet or whatever, you have to have people in at an earlier point and explain exactly what you're going to do and why you're going to do it and get them kind of on board and thinking in the way that you're doing. Equally, the, <coughs> the end is always disappointing because um, 
you tend to sometimes, if you're not careful, get an A4 piece of paper saying, thank you very much. We had this go with X, Y and Z, much to your surprise kind of thing. OK, and that, again, is really not the way to deal with things because for two reasons. Number one, they've given you quite a bit of their time, etc. And they need, they need a, a, a fuller return than that. But also you're missing, uh, again, it's a question of meaningful. You're missing a trick because these people will have ideas in response to what you've done. In other words, you've done something and you, you say, oh, the sense of meeting was X, Y, and Z. And we, we, we kind of come in, what really was it? Was that what we, we kind of came up with, etc.? Or, or wasn't it? So you kind of need to start with us earlier, use us, come back to us later, and then it becomes meaningful activity to all people and meaningful in the same kind of way, rather than treating us as a kind of resource that's got to be used. I think that the, the, one of the great things really is sometimes that method kind of runs the show rather than your aim running the show. So you need to know what your aim is to begin with and then see to what extent should members of the public be participants and so forth. All I'm suggesting is that you should offer them the chance to get in there slightly earlier than you're doing and have a bigger production at the end. Whether or not they take control will be another thing, but that would lead us back beautifully to that original question about meaningful. Because if they get there at the beginning and they're setting the agenda, maybe even before that the application's gone in, yeah, then everybody will be, it will be meaningful if there's almost by definition it wants to be. But rather than having some kind of simple, I mean, one of the problems I suspect is at the back of my mind is always the, the idea that you're there because the grant demands that you're there. OK, and I think even a relatively naive person gets the message that, that you're needed to, to, to do that. Um, whereas obviously, if you're there at the beginning, then it, it, it's much more, much better. Mm. And uh, I think listening to you talk, George, it feels as though still how public are involved in is still very heavily defined by researchers. Mm. Um, and, and, I, and I guess if I'm thinking through what you're saying, those 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 kind of relationships should exist already even before the grant is even considered in people's minds. Yeah. I, 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 I'm suggesting that's one way to do it, I'm not suggesting it's, it's the, the, the only way. Again, because it depends on what your aim is at the end. You may just want to occasionally wheel people in and wheel them out. But I think sometimes you can get a lot more by not doing that particular product. Um, but I think the other thing is this, if you really got service users and carers involved or you got the, the general public involved, you might have to change not just the content of the research, but the kind of research that's done. And again, not just, I'm, I'm thinking the manner of what counts. We had an interesting one recently where somebody, somebody gave a talk on, um, what was it now, evidence-based medicine, okay. And the, one of the points that I didn't make at that meeting was what counts as evidence? Now, there's a great tendency to think unless it's the gold standard of, again, it was the talk this morning that we you heard it on, um, uh, what was it, the control groups. But unless you're doing your control group and you're doing it in a positivistic manner, it's not research. Whereas, obviously, if you had the general public, they may be much more saying, well, hang on a minute, stories can also count as evidence and research as well. But that might not go down well with some academics who want the publishable, restricted, it's got to be positivistic or it doesn't exist. So that's kind of keeping your mind open for whichever way the, the, the public that you're engaging with leads you to put it, up to people. <coughs> yes, I, I, and I think so. And yeah, leaving the mind, mind open. I'm not, obviously positivism has it's, it's done a tremendous benefit to the world, etc. And certainly to, to medicine, but it's not the only way of looking at the world and it's not the only evidence that you can have. And the very fact that you're using service users or using the general public suggests there's a, an acceptance that that always isn't the case because obviously you're not dealing with control groups, you're moving into a different field. So I wonder whether the, the whole nature of what counts as research would change if you involve the public more. 
Now, I'm not even suggesting that's a good thing. I'm suggesting that is a consequential thing. Mm. And and so, George, I'm thinking about some of the things that you're saying. It sounds like there'll be different ways to involve the public depending on what the point of the the kind of the consultation or the collaboration is. That there's no one right way of doing it, or is there one right way of doing no, no, it? No, the, the, the whole point is that one of my great themes is that people get hooked on certain methodologies. You know, I always tend to do this, I always tend to do that, or they've got a little range of, of things. And so whatever problem is chucked at them, that's what they do. In other words, the old, the old thing, if all you've got is a hammer or something, then everything is a nail, isn't it? So you have to start off with what the problem is, and then work from that. And you may just simply have to say, well, I'm sorry, this is not a problem for me and my talent sets. This is a problem for somebody else and pass it on to somebody else in the department to do. George, what kind of top tip would you have for someone who was new to research and that needed to engage with members of the public to help shape their research? They've got an idea, but mm. maybe they didn't quite know what their exact question was going to be or what appropriate methods might be. Okay. What kind of top right. tip would you give them? Well, OK, you, you've said the question hasn't really been crystallised, has it? OK, so who better to help you some, sometimes, not always, help you to crystallise it than the general public? I mean, you're going to talk to the, your, your idea among your colleagues, aren't you? So you're going to get the academic view, but well, you maybe get the public view as well. But the top tip is always the same, is there's a tendency to treat people instrumentally. But if you've got a relationship going first, and then you ask them, so hopefully in the stuff I'm doing, that I'm already have a relationship with people, then I'll go and ask them, could you help me with X? And they're highly likely to say yes, and they're highly likely to, to, to be honest and upfront and so forth with me. But if I just went to some random university and tried to get hold of some academics and some service users, then clearly you, you get people, but it wouldn't be the same quality that you need. So the whole point is really, are you going for quality or quantity? And if you want quality, get the relationship going first, maybe by involving them earlier, or maybe just not even just doing something else, just just some meeting or other with the service user group coming along, etc. And then out of that arises it. But if you expect people to suddenly jump because you suddenly need them, that would be really I think they, that's really important. And I think sometimes we I think sometimes when we only engage later on in the journey, there isn't the time to really build up those relationships and that notion of trust and, and, and that you so that you get to know each other as a bit more of a relationship with people yeah. that you're working with. I think it's a relationship, but also the question of are you missing a trick at the beginning? I mean, one of the great things that I say to people, you, you've heard me say, is it pester people on the bus kind of thing about your what you're doing. Because if you can if you convince a lay member of the public what you're doing in a nice, simple way, two things will happen. One, they'll understand it. But the amazing thing is you will actually understand it. We've moved. I think we've moved a long way in the last 10 years, how we move, how we work with members of the public, maybe mm. mainly in a positive way, but maybe not. Um, what, what would you like to see happen in the next 10 years for how researchers and academics work with members of the public? OK, I think I'd like if it's been 10 years and it, it certainly has been, I'd like a step back moment. OK, to, to realise where you've got to and whether what at what point this journey should stop. Because there is a tendency to, for, for like Topsy, for things to grow and grow and grow. And once it becomes ingrained, it's difficult to, to get rid of. So I know it seems daft as a member of the public to say, to what extent do you need them? But I think that probably needs a rethink rather than, than going. We always have this in, in a whole series of ways that where the pendulum simply goes too, too far, et cetera, et cetera. And then you need to kind of realize that, that they, when is the optimum time and maybe the optimum time might be around now or shortly but you don't want to you don't want to go on a journey when your destination is actually halfway along that journey not at the end of it so you don't carry it on down the m6 once you pass birmingham or something that's where you if that's where you want to be i think that what you actually need to do quite simply is talk to a philosopher 
I know it sounds stupid, but, but words like, you know, meaningful and so forth, really try to understand yourself what is going on rather than just saying, well, this is politically and socially acceptable and this, this is what is needed for grant, etc, etc. So it, it is just that ability to sort of step back, OK, because the, the great tendency is to believe that wherever you are in, at the time, we, we've now solved the problems of the past. We, 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 we're now living in our best time, so to speak, not realising, of course, that when people look back at us now, they will think, my God, did they really do that? Just as we look back and look at, back at schooling now or the way that, say, nursing was, is that the way they did it? And I, I'm, I'm really hopeful that people in 10, 20, 50 years' time will look back at us and think what idiots we are to, to do it that way. But we're idiots because we're too engaged in what we're doing. Is there anything that you feel is really important for for someone maybe who knows less about involving members of the public in health research that I haven't asked, that I haven't thought to ask? The only other thing I'd say that I haven't said really is this. I always worry that, uh, I was reading something the other day, what was the phrase? It was absolutely beautiful. It says, white middle class retirees. And that, that can be your group if you're not careful. That is a, a real worry I have that also maybe is time to take stock of. If you want them to be represented, maybe you don't, how representative are they? And are they the usual suspects? <laughs> Sorry, I'm making I think that that's difficult a really good for you. Point. No, I think that's a good point. And the recent scoping review that we did kind of shows that researchers and academics are quite aware that they're maybe not always reaching the groups of people that really could challenge and bring forward their ideas um, because they are sometimes described as hard to reach, but it's just maybe we're just not doing it right in order to reach them. They're yeah, not hard I, I to think it's not, doing not it doing right. it, And maybe just thinking more imaginatively of how to, let, because the great tent is to all oh, as a social, as, you know, service youth and carers group, here's our pool, etc. rather than, 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 than thinking more widely. But the $64,000 question is all the same. What on earth are you trying to do? And then everything else from that just follows or should follow. That's perfect. That's a perfect way to end the, to end the uh, interview. So thank you, George.